I've got the brand new Erebus here guys. In fact, I've got 12 brand new Erebuses as you can see here and they're a little bit overwhelming because I normally review one, two, maybe three watches at a time, but 12 is a lot. So I'm not gonna review the 12. I've actually decided to put two or three aside and muck around with them throughout the week. Now the vibes that I'm getting off these watches, they're very, very Rolex, Omega, or even Baby Grand Seiko and the finishing seems to be on a very good level, especially at this price point. And I've got to be honest, apart from two or three small niggles on the wrist, the watch has actually been a pleasant surprise throughout the week. Let's run the intro, let's get stuck into the second watch from Jody and Steven, the Erebus Ascent. Now being a professional photographer, Jody and Steven asked me to photograph these watches for their website. So I managed to actually spend a good week with all of their color variants. And therein lies the problems. Because if you're a prospective buyer for this watch, you're going to find it extremely difficult to choose one watch. Because even for me, I found at least three that I really thought, gee, I really like that. But that said, the experience on the wrist of the different watches and different bracelet options really yielded some interesting results for me. Mostly good, but also I found a few areas where I think these could really offer some room for improvement and I'm going to share my findings with you. Firstly, let's get stuck into the specs of the watch. I measure a case diameter of 38.6 and a lug to lug of 44.7. Their case height comes in at 11.1 with a lug width of 20. Now the crown is a 6.2 mm signed screw down crown. The watch offers 100 meters of water resistance and the total weight on the bracelets, sides to my 18 cm wrist, come in at exactly 120 grams on the J style and 126 grams on the O style, respectively. Now as you can see in my hands, there are two different types of bracelets on these watches. One's an O style bracelet, one's a J style, as you can see. And both the bracelets wear slightly differently on the wrist. The comfort on all the watches have been superb and having a footprint of just under 39 mil and a really good height, I think these are designed to find comfort on many different types of wrists. Now both the bracelets have a taper from 20 mil down to 16 at the clasp end. They've got quick release end links, screw pins, very good articulation regardless of which bracelet, a fully milled swivel and clasp, and an on the fly toolless micro adjustment system. Now the clasp offers around seven millimeters of on the fly adjustment. Just press the button, as you can see it comes out and slips easily back in. A really nice design and a welcome addition here. Now the only real difference that I found between the two bracelets is the effective lug to lug. If you notice the one on the left, the end links protrude past that lug to lug distance, bringing it to an effective lug to lug of 50.8 mil, whereas the one on the right offers an effective lug to lug of 47.1. But even in saying that, it's not a real deal breaker because the actual end link follows the case shape straight down and seems to hug the wrist really nicely. Now, although this is classified as a 39mm watch, the experience on my wrist has been more like a 37 or even a 38mm watch at best. Why? Well, I made mention that it's very baby Grand Seiko vibes coming off it. And if you look at the side of the case, you can see there's a high polished bevel going the entire length of the case. And in conjunction with our polished bezel, you can see that the case, although it's 39 mil, the dial is set in. So visually the watch looks smaller on the wrist, if that makes sense. Next, if we turn the watch over, you can see there's a solid case back. And hiding behind that case back is a Miyota 9015, a proper date complication, 28,800 vibrations per hour, hacking and hand winding, a really nice reliable workhorse for these watches. Now the crystal on the watches is a double dome sapphire. It's a very subtle dome. It offers clear anti-reflective coating and with all the dial variants, I've really had no issues. I think they've chosen well here. So there's no complaints in that department. Effective and a very good view of that dial. And speaking of that dial, this is one of the hero of these watches. You've got 12 different types of variants. As you can see, you've got a green helix dial here on the left. You've got an adventure in here on the right. In fact, photographing these watches, the way that the light plays on the Helix is quite impressive. You've got three different type of enamel dolls as well, from blue, white, as well as black, an Aventurine, as well as a Malachi version. So there's many dolls to choose from. And for me personally, <laughs> I really like the look of a few of them. So in that department, it's pretty hard to choose. 
So if you're looking for one watch, quite a few different layouts and colorways to choose from. For me personally, the Helix dial was the most interesting as it offers their logo pattern in a Helix or a spiral layout. Very effective, it really plays with the light well, and I think at this price point, a watch coming with an applique logo as well as a frame date applied markers, gee, they're really pushing the envelope when it comes to bank for buck. Next, what's the loom like? While the watches offer BGW9 Super Luminova on the hands, the indices, as well as those markers, and I've got to be honest, for a sports watch, it's been great. There's more than sufficient loom here on these watches, and it's actually been just as good, if not better, than some of the dive watches I've gotten on the channel in the past. So pretty high praise in that department. And lastly, before we get onto any gripes or room for improvement, what's the price? The enamel and fume dial versions are coming in at 349 US dollars, plus shipping. Whereas the Helix dials come in at 379. And lastly, the two mineral dials, the Aventurine and the Malachite, come in at 399. So from my understanding, these prices are $100 less being pre-order prices as compared to the recommended retail. So pricing-wise, I think Erebus has structured these watches quite nicely. And on that note, what are my gripes or my room for improvement on these watches? Well, first and foremost, the clasp. I love the fact that it's got micro adjustability on it. However, it only offers seven millimeters of adjustment. And on this O-style bracelet, the link sizes are 10.3 mil. Now, I don't know if a half link is in the works, but for me, I think that's a necessity here for proper micro adjustability, especially on this bracelet. Whereas on this one, you won't have an issue because the link size is a very small, which gives you more than enough leeway for fine adjustment. Next room for improvement for me are those end links. Both the models have protruding spring bars. So as you can see, they sit a little bit lower. They sit almost as low as that case back. And on both bracelets, I did feel them on my wrist. So I think that's an area in which this watch needs addressing. Next point of interest for me, well, just like I said that Grand Seiko offers highly polished bevel sides, you're gonna find that this is a fingerprint magnet. On the crown side, where you actually use the watch, you'll find that it scratches up just in here and in here. It's, it's gonna happen over time. You can't avoid that. It happens with Grand Seikos. It's gonna happen with this watch over time. Nothing a quick polish can't sort out, but it's just something to be aware of. And that's pretty much it, guys, because I think what Stephen and Jody have offered here, the watches have been quite impressive. The loom has been great. The size, the footprint has been really good. And honestly, like I said, visually, they actually look smaller on the wrist than the 39 mil. I think the price is very impressive for what you're getting here. They're pretty much priced below what the competition is offering for this level of finishing features and I think an overall package. So I hope you enjoyed that, guys. The Erebus Ascent, a really nicely finished watch. Very Omega with its aggressive markers. Very Grand Seiko-ish with its bevel case. Bit of Rolex DNA in there as well. But I think overall, as a really well-made, finalized product, it's definitely a watch to consider. Hit me up in the comments, guys. Let me know what you think of these watches. Erebus' second watch. I've been lucky enough to spend a week with the 12 watches before I had to send them back. So I got to experience everything, which is cool. And for me personally, I think the Helix as well as the blue or black enamel are real standouts. Thanks for watching, be well, enjoy the hobby, enjoy the watch that's on your wrist, enjoy each other, and we'll see you in the next one.